Well, hello and welcome to River Valley Online, our Bible study for Wednesday, April 1st. I've been doing this series since this really started of moments of trust, especially trust in the face of adversity. And we've covered some topics of, of people who've shown it well and some who've shown it very poorly. Well, today we come to a moment in the scriptures where if I think about the opposite of trust, the word doubt, this is probably the person in the scripture that a lot of people would say. John chapter 20 and poor old Thomas. Now, now Thomas was a faithful disciple by all accounts. All we see in scripture is him being faithful to God. Really not much uh, even about him in the gospels. We know a lot about you know Peter and, and, and John and the other uh, apostles, but uh, Thomas we don't know a ton about. And so this one moment that Thomas really gets to shine, all we learn about him is that he doubted. Well, I think that's a little unfortunate because uh, our records, and, and this isn't, you know, set in stone. We don't know 100% about this, but it, it looks like Thomas the Apostle may have made it all the way from Jerusalem in his missionary journeys all the way to India. There's a great tradition of faith that, that looks like Thomas planted the gospel in India, many miles, many, many months, many, maybe even years journey away from his homeland. And so Thomas was a, a faithful disciple, but here we have this moment of doubt. And so poor old Thomas gets uh, coined Doubting Thomas. It's a phrase, it's a little old-fashioned nowadays, you don't hear it very much, but if, if someone is doubtful, they, they might be called a, oh, you're a doubting Thomas. Well, that's where this comes from, John chapter 20. Well, I think with Easter on the horizon here, it's a good idea to talk about this. So here's the scene. Here's the scene. The, the crucifixion has happened. So Jesus has been crucified. He's, he's been arrested and tried and crucified. And now he's been in the tomb for some days now, for, for three days. And, and the disciples are waiting, not so much for his resurrection, they're waiting to be arrested and killed themselves. So they're gathered together in this fearful state. But then Mary appears out at the, the tomb. She runs out there and she sees that Jesus is resurrected. She has this interaction with an angel. She runs back, she tells the men, and they don't really believe her to start either. And so we see this in John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. You know, this whole story, uh, old doubting Thomas gets brought up. But what about the other disciples? The other disciples who were told, just like Thomas, that Jesus was to be handed over to the officials, that he was to be crucified, and that he would rise again. See, they were afraid. They doubted the power of Jesus, and so they hid. They locked the doors. But Jesus comes in, and he says this phrase, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. A, a common greeting still used in the Middle East today. Peace be with you. Right? Jesus shows up, after his resurrection, and he shows up to a fearful room of men who have locked themselves in the, inside, hiding from the Jews, hiding from the, the Romans. They're afraid. They're doubtful. And, and if we look back a couple chapters, even just a few verses, we see that their behavior leading up to this point has not been very trusting either. Peter, the, uh, really a leader amongst them, what did he do? Well, he denied Christ three times that night of the trial. The other disciples, no mention of them other than that they just scattered to the wind. They hid, they ran away. And you may think that when Jesus shows up, it might be time to rebuke or, or you know, really be upset with these men saying, hey, didn't I tell you? to be faithful? Didn't I tell you to trust me? But instead, Jesus says, peace be with you. You know, I think for me, and the times where I've really doubted 
where I've really maybe walked away from the Lord. That's what I love. One of the things I love most about Jesus, kind of a silly idea of what do I love most about Jesus? Well, everything, but, but this, this one thing I, I love so much about Jesus is that he's not a nagging person. Right? He, 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 our Father in Heaven is not a nagging Father. He's not an I told you so. He's not a, a well, thanks for coming back to me and now I'm going to give you a real tongue lashing here. That, it just doesn't seem to be His character. His character is exemplified in this and other stories like the prodigal son. When the son returns to the Father, does the Father sit him down and say, son, well, here's a 10-point lecture on the mistakes that you've made. No, he throws a party for him. He throws a, 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 a wild party to celebrate his son. It's the same here with Jesus, right? You'd think, okay, Jesus is going to come into this room and he's going to give these guys what for, and instead he says, peace be with you. Let's look again Verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you, right? Peace be with you. Verse 20, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord, right? They, they, they rejoice. They're, they're excited. They know it's Jesus. So we're going to put a pin in that, and I'm going to go back to the verses that I've skipped here. And what I want to do is go forward to verse 24, the doubting part of this. Verse 24, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. We don't know why. We don't know where he was. Why wasn't he hiding with his friends? Why? Maybe he was hiding on his own. Maybe he was trying to distance himself from them. It's all just guessing. We don't know. So, verse 25, The other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Now, this is where the doubting Thomas comes from. Right, Thomas, his friends, his, these, these men that he's walked with, that he's lived with for three years, say, Thomas, we saw Jesus. Right? The real Jesus, a, a resurrected Jesus, a, a physical Jesus. And he says, I will never take your word for it. The only thing that will prove to me that he is real is touching, is, is feeling the wounds right, on him, is laying hands on him. So we don't know how that interaction went because it, it moves on now in verse 26. Eight days later... His disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Here is that greeting again. Right? He's not ready to rip into Thomas. He's not ready to tear him apart. He says, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas, who is filled with unbelief, filled with fear, filled with doubt, has a, uh, uh, an interaction with Jesus, a, a time where Jesus shows up mightily. And his fear and his unbelief is turned into this declaration, my Lord and my God. In no uncertain terms here, Thomas is saying Jesus is God, right? A pretty powerful thing to say to another person, especially a person that you've eaten with, that you've, you've hung out with for, for three years, that you've slept next to in the dirt as you've traveled from town to town. He looks at that person and he doesn't say, you are sent from God. He doesn't even say in this title here, you are the son of God. He says in this title, you are God. God eternal. 
God everlasting. The God. Yahweh God. And Thomas here has moved from unbelief to full belief. Now, I don't know what camp you're in. Right? I don't know if you've been quick to respond to Jesus showing up in powerful ways. Or maybe you've been a little slower like Thomas. Maybe you've said, well, I need to see it a little bit more. Maybe there are times where you kind of sense that God is working, but you want a sign. You want something more powerful. But here's the thing. I think God does that. I think that God, if you are listening, shows up in powerful ways. He does. I've seen it in my own life where I've doubted, where I've been filled with fear. And I've said, God, I really, really, really need to see it. Like, I believe you, but I need to see it. And God has said, all right, all right, l let me show you. And, and he does this. He shows up and he says, touch, taste, experience my goodness, experience who I am. And I, just like Thomas, have to go, wow, you are God and I am not. I but listen to Jesus' last words here. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I think there's a special blessing in you and I taking God at his word. It's saying, Lord, I trust that you're working. And here's the thing that's funny about that statement is I don't think that you can believe without seeing. All right? uh, Jesus doesn't mean here that, that, that you stumble backwards into belief. Right? The, the, the scripture is clear that, that you and I need to be moved to belief. That, that something needs to help us. That you and I can't force our way to belief. And that's this verse that I skipped. This linchpin to this whole thing in verse 22. 21, 22, and 23. Jesus said to them in 21, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me. Even so, I am sending you. He's got a mission for them. Verse 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now this is, without getting too theological here, this is a, is a controversial couple verses here. What does Jesus mean? What is happening here? Acts 2 is called Pentecost. It's a time when the Spirit comes upon them in power. But I and, and other theologians, as we look at this passage, I really do see here the first sending of, of, of the Spirit of God into the apostles, right? That, that this isn't um, contradictory to Acts 2. Acts 2 is, is awesome. Acts 2 is this amazing, powerful uh, moment where the Spirit empowers them to do an amazing work. But I think right here, Jesus says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And he says he, he breathes. Well, how did, how did God create? He spoke. He, he breathed. You can't speak a word. Go ahead and try it right now. Try to speak a word without breathing. Now, I wish I was in a room full of you because this would be a funny thing to watch. Right? You can't do it. You can't say it without breathing. And in this moment, Jesus breathes into them new life. And that life is what empowers them to trust. And so if you are struggling with trust, you need to ask that the Spirit empower you for trust. If you are struggling with understanding or belief, ask the Spirit to help you with understanding and belief. See, the Holy Spirit empowers the life of the believer to live a victorious life in Christ. And part of that victorious life in Christ is being able to say time and time again, as Thomas did, my Lord and my God, this, this you're in charge and I'm not. And that is the antithesis, the opposite of what humans want, right? What we want inside is we want to be in charge. We want to be in control, right? And right now, in the midst of this pandemic, guess what is gone? Control. You don't have it. You can't just go where you want to go. You can't just do what you want to do. There are many people who right now, their incomes are totally gone. The things that they were relying on, gone. 
Control. Gone. Was it really control? No, it was an illusion of control. Because you can't control pandemics. You can't control earthquakes. You can't control the rotation of the earth, the, the, the days and the years, gravity. You and I have no control. So trust is our only option. And we have a choice, though. Do we put our trust in ourselves and these, these forces that we try to use as control? Do we put them in savings accounts? Do we put them in jobs? Do we put them in our physical health? No. Right? Because we know those things can disappear just like that. Instead, you and I, as followers of Jesus, can put our hope and trust into the only thing that doesn't disappoint. That is God. His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that fills us. One God, three persons, this mysterious Trinity thing. You know, as we think about trust and seeing, you know, a lot of people have problems with believing the Bible because of things like the Trinity. They go, I don't understand it. I don't believe it because I don't understand it. Or the resurrection, I don't understand it, so I don't believe it. It can't be real. I tell you what, things that I totally understand, I don't think they're powerful enough to control this universe because I know how small my mind is. And if my mind can fully grasp it, I don't think it can be powerful enough to control the forces of this universe. I don't think it can be powerful enough to have a plan in the midst of a pandemic. If I could really wrap my head around it, I don't think it's real enough to be the power that I need in my life. So some encouragement for today. As I've kind of gone to and fro here, just reflecting on some ideas that the Lord's been placing on my heart. One, do you trust Jesus? Have you trusted Jesus? And do you keep trusting Jesus, right? Jesus is the center here. Do you believe him? The next thing, are you filled with the Spirit? Do you know what that is? If not, reach out to us, right? Reach out to us. Send me an email. It's Caleb at rivervalleyalliance.org. Reach out to me. Reach out to our, our other pastors. We'd love to talk to you about that, about being filled with the Spirit. And then, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Verse 21, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Are you using this? Are you using your trust? Are you using the power that the Spirit's given to hide it, to keep it for yourself? Are you sharing it with friends and neighbors that desperately need it? So that's some thoughts for this Wednesday evening or whenever you're watching. I hope that, that God can use these things for you. And I'd just like to pray a blessing over you right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless the people listening to these words, that you would watch over and protect them, Lord, that you would keep their families safe. But most of all, Lord, your will would be done. I pray, Lord, that you would shine on us, that you would... Just imprint on us, Lord, an understanding of you. I pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless and take care.